Mother fell hard for this Matilda Boggs system and has it furnished me aid and comfort. Take Rule 6, Chapter 3. Never discipline a child in anger. Always be to them a sweet example of self-control and loving guidance. This attitude on your part will not only arouse in the child a sense of shame for wrongdoing, it will also awaken in its little heart a desire to emulate these sterling qualities. Isn't that a honey? But even so, I've tottered on the ragged edge of disaster. There was the time Tommy Webster and I went scientific with our amateur moonshine still. impossible child I ever... Oh, it's all my fault, Mrs. Hollingsworth. Uh, no, Tommy, I can't believe that. It's always been Joan who has led you into one disastrous escapade after another. You'd be fairly well behaved if it weren't for her influence, but you've always been putty in her hands. I can't understand why Joan is such a scatterbrain. That episode gave love and reason an awful wallop. Actually, there was a time you might have thought I was something the doctor left at the house by mistake. Trouble is, I was never allowed to grow up naturally. Mother had the quaint, old-fashioned idea that the older sister was the first to be married. Hello, infant. Daydreaming? Yes, I was thinking how delightful it would be to bang that empty head of yours on the floor and watch it bounce. What a little savage you are. You bet I'm savage. I may be good at this child impersonation act, but I played my last encore. But I'm warning you, you better get busy and grab yourself a license to have a man around or you'll be left at the post. Girls, what is the meaning of this? Mother, where do you suppose Joan picked up such uncouth language? It may be uncouth, but I'm giving you the lowdown. Be smart or leave it lay. It's your funeral. Now, let's have no squabbling. Joan, you must not talk to your sister like that. Oh, Ethel, you look positively radiant. I'm sure Mr. Barnes will find you irresistible. I wouldn't lay much of a bet on that. Mother, are you going to let her stand there and insult me that way? Was she insulting you? Oh, I was wondering what she was talking about. Joan, child, you are doing your best to provoke me. But, Mother... <gasps> Joan, what have you done to your dress? I was certainly not aware that you had such a low-cut bodice. I, I thought if I tucked it in just a little, people would stop patting me on the head and pulling some wheeze about Santa Claus. You know better than to do a thing like that without first consulting me. Oh, I, I am provoked with you, Joan. Well, there's no time now to repair the damage. You'll have to wear something else to dinner. I don't have any other decent-looking dress. That is something you brought upon yourself. Did Lammy Pie stick her neck out a little too far? To break an arm, patting yourself on the back, Lammy Pie is coming up fast on the outside. If Jay Waldo is the heartthrob they say he is, I'll be in there pitching. Mother, now you see the reason for the altered dress. Did she explain something? She plans to throw herself at Mr. Barnes and do everything she can to embarrass me. I'm afraid you shall have to remain in your room while you're in such a disobedient state of mind. Yes, Mother. Joan is really becoming quite a problem. She must have inherited an incorrigible strain from her father's side of the family. At times, I feel completely baffled. Well, I'd suggest solving the problem with a street jacket. Oh, dear, no. Such barbaric discipline is utterly foreign to the science of child guidance. Although I will admit, at times, it would add greatly to my mental tranquility. I'll get nowhere stuck in my room. I'm crazy to see Jay Waldo. And when I'm crazy to do something, I'm crazy enough to do anything. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Barnes. I believe Mrs. Hollingsworth is expecting me.
Just a minute. Uh, why not try sneaking up on it? Its master's voice might have a soothing effect. Haven't you a pet name for that brood? Well, I just bought it. I had no idea it was so wild. Then I'll tame it with my bare hands. Oh, oh no, let me. Sorry, I, I was awfully clumsy. Think nothing of it. I want the chase. Uh, no, no, no. Let it stay where it is. I will not. I'll put that hat in its place or die in the attempt. I more than half expected it to snap at me. <laughs> oh, uh, good evening, Mrs. Hollingsworth. We were having a little difficulty with my hat. <laughs> yes, that's... that's... Easily understandable. I, I, I must apologize. Oh, no, don't blame the young lady. It was all my fault. I gave her a nasty bump on the head. I feel stupid for having caused such a turmoil. Really, it was nothing at all. Uh, don't give it a thought. Oh, Mr. Barnes, uh, may I present my daughter, Ethel? Ethel, Mr. Barnes. Charles. Delighted. I'll drive. From where I sat, it looked like a photograph finished between you and old man Trouble. That's nothing new in my life. How did you happen to be parked there? Oh, I just stop here to think about this and that, and sometimes one thing or another. Is that fun? Yeah, it could be. Uh, you and me might have something interesting to talk about. That's possible. <laughs> that was a snappy getaway you made. How come? I take a little gallop like that once in a while. It's good for the figure. Yeah, I know. Exercise at the right time saves a lot of trouble. Why were you so anxious to get away with that Kelly? Oh, I happened to have it when I took off and forgot to let go, that's all. Oh, yeah? Did you think it hid the family jewels in there? Could be. Did you hang things up so bad you, you can't go back? Oh, no, I can go back after the blood pressure subsides. They're rather fond of me in a gruesome sort of way. Hmm, that's great. Did uh, Mrs. H wear her pearls tonight? You've gotten off the beam. We're not talking about pearls. We're talking about pearls. Did she wear them? Thanks for the lift. I'll manage to stagger along the rest of the way. Now, just relax. You're not walking off in this buggy ride. You work alone or you got a pal? I work by myself, and it's my own idea. Say, I hit the jackpot. <laughs> You're not bad looking, and I, I think you got brains. It's nice of you to say so, but don't get carried away by your enthusiasm. Oh, now just take it easy. I haven't got any ideas like you think I have. This is business. I've been working this Berg solitaire, and I've been doing pretty good for myself. But I haven't been able to knock over this Harlings was joint, and that's the prize plum in the basket. Now, we team up together. You get me inside, 
<laughs> the rest is a pushover. They don't make a safe that I can't open. <laughs> a big cleanup and a quick slant for both of us. Not bad, eh? Referring to the Undertakers, it certainly was. But if you're thinking about our little playmate, guess again. Oh, we lose him right now. Hang on, here we go. Didn't I get you out of it? I don't know. The final returns aren't in yet. Oh, you tomatoes give me a pain. What do you know about pain? My poor liver is lost. I doubt it will ever find its way home again. And if you can find a spot on me the size of a dime that isn't bruised, oh no, I don't mean for you to look. Uh-oh, here we go again. Can you beat that cop? I don't know. You didn't show much class in the steeplechase. See what you can do on the straightaway. Not your Jimmy, but uh, you can call me Michael and uh, we'll start from there. Martha, you come in the house. Yes, ma'am, in just a minute. You trapped yourself in this house this instant. 
Listen, how many times have I told you I won't stand for any nighttime flannel around the back door? And as long as I'm a housekeeper here, there'll be no girl working this house that can't behave themselves. Get in the house, no more back talk. Yes, ma'am. It's for you, you good-for-nothing scalawags. I'm sorry I forgot my glasses. I'd like to take a good look at you. It's the likes of you, Lolly, yanking around back door to lead young girls astray. I've got a good mind to turn you over to a policeman. Policeman? Lady, I am a policeman. I'm chasing a couple of burglars that just gave me the slip. I thought you was a boy scout. A boy. <laughs> have so much furniture. Such goings on is a disgrace to a respectable neighborhood. Uh, Mrs. Wiggins. What are you doing up so late? Well, I might as well stay up. A body can't sleep with all this shooting and shouting all the running around has been going on here tonight. Well, what's the trouble? Well, a policeman was chasing a gang of desperate criminals, a male and a female, and they'd driven right up here around the house. And I know I won't sleep a wink tonight worrying, and I'm going to write that newspaper the first thing in the morning. If they can't catch criminals without all this fuss and noise and disturbing honest folks that's trying to sleep, they ought to do it in the daytime. Maybe it's a good thing I did wake up, because I found that hussy Martha lollygagging out that back door, and she ran in the house before I had a chance to tell her what I had a mind to tell her. Well, why don't you go up and tell her the rest of it now? Well, I might just well, because I won't sleep a wink all night if they've driven them desperate Don't criminals forget up. now, you were going to have a talk with Martha. Oh, I won't forget. When I get through telling what I got to tell her, she won't forget it in a hurry. I'll tell you that. The idea of her lollygagging out that back door and all them desperate criminals coming in here while I took them out with. Respectable people here keep them awake up all night. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello. Now, I'm a little absent-minded once in a while. I didn't bring you home with me by mistake, did I? Oh, no, it wasn't you. I, I was passing by and I stopped to return your hat. Well, thanks very much. Uh, is this all of it? It is a little dented, isn't it? Dented, yeah. Not five minutes of lollygagging around that back door. Oh, you saw no such thing. You must be losing your mind. Listen, don't pull the wool over my eyes and don't talk back to me. I, I know what I did with my own eyes. I'm not going to say you haven't heard the words in your mind. You've been walking around and listening to sleep. You were going to tell me how you happened to be behind this particular door. If there's any brand of bad luck that missed me tonight, it must be a very rare variety. Mrs. Hollingsworth seemed a bit disturbed tonight, and I left the house in somewhat of a panic. A man sitting in a car parked at the end of the driveway offered me a lift. I didn't know it was a burglar with a stolen car until a motorcycle cop started chasing us all over the countryside. And I do mean countryside. It was nip and tuck with nip not having a thing on tuck in the way of speed. I've been bruised, battered, and hounded over half the country through no fault of my own. It's a wonder I lived through it. No, oh, that's marvelous. Who writes your material? Why, what do you mean? For extemporaneous, free-handed, artistic lying that's never been equal. Don't you believe me? You didn't really expect me to believe it, did you? Of course I did. Why do you suppose I went to the trouble of telling you? I don't know. I was wondering why you did myself. If you believe I'm one of those desperate criminals that was driven up around the house, why don't you call the police? Well, I suppose as a good citizen, I ought to, but why should I assume that responsibility? You've never been in jail, have you? No, I haven't. Well, there you are. You've never been in jail. Is that bad? Don't you see? As long as you've never been in jail, there's still a chance for you to get hold of yourself and start all over again. So why should I assume the responsibility of notifying the police? If you're asking me, I'm sure I don't know. No, and I don't know why this thing had to be dumped into my lap either. Why, to think it over, could I have a few moments alone with your refrigerator? Refrigerator? Certainly, that heavenly place where people keep leftover foods. I could go for a handful of cold-boiled potatoes. It would interest me a lot. Well, if you're that hungry, come on, if you don't mind serving yourself. Don't worry about the service. Just show me where the food is and step aside. I thought I knocked over more furniture than this. There it is. Oh, 
Help yourself. Thanks. Good heavens, girl, can't you look ahead? Can't you see what's going to happen to you if you insist on hanging around with burglars? It, it wasn't from choice, it was forced upon me. Oh, now that's a quitter's alibi. I'm not trying to preach to you, I'm just talking common sense. Ordinarily, I don't go around trying to reform people, but, well, there's something about you that's different. Anybody can see you're not completely bad. said you had bats in your belfry, and now I know it. Oh, you shut up. I know a man's face. Oh, yes, that's much right to talk to you. You've been seeing the big property in the way that you've been walking around. I don't need your imagination. Walking around. I don't have another thing to do. I can see one because I couldn't get back. Be quiet. Mr. Barnes, just as sure as I'm alive, I saw a man's face looking at me through that window, and I won't sleep a wink all night. Oh, all right. If it leaves your mind, Annie, I'll go upstairs and make a complete search of the house. Hello, baby. Surprise. Hello. Did you think I was one of those guys to take it on the lamb and leave a pal on the lurch? Oh, not so. When that copper took out after you, I'd tell him if he'd have nailed you, it would have been just too bad for him. That's me all the way. <laughs> I stick to my friends. <laughs> you know, it was smart the way you stood right out from that copper's nose. It began to look as if you were stuck in there and as if I was going to have to come in here and spring you. It would have been as easy as shooting fish if that animated comic strip hadn't flashed me while I was Jimmy in the wind and let out that squawk. <laughs> but here I am, and we better slide while the going's good. Take it easy. I spotted something in this house worth going after. Oh, Nix. Leave it lay until we wind up that other ball of yarn. One thing at a time is the way to keep active in this business, baby. Go ahead and the other job. I'll handle this one. No dice. No, that we stick together, baby. I'm nuts about you. When you said you were nuts, you said it all. This is neither the time, place, of the girl for any woo pitching. For a person who doesn't believe in combining business with pleasure, you allow yourself a lot of leeway. Oh, next, baby, let's not fight. On the level, I'm nuts about you. Come on. Hey, we gotta get out of here. Go ahead and make another world tour if you like. I'll flip this one out. If that mug comes in here, I'll blast him. I want to just think it easy once them. No, you tomatoes are wacky. Good heavens, are you still eating? I'm just about finished. Did you find the man who frightened the old lady? No, but I found a tree branch outside the window that a nearsighted, nervous old lady might think was a man. Oh. What's the matter? Something bit me. Something bit you? That's impossible. Things do bite people now and then. Oh, yes, of course, but I don't know what it could have been. Is that important? Personally, I'm willing to call it a close incident. Well, I'm not. I don't like things that bite people prowling around my house. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, well, you're sorry. Well, I guess that makes everything all right. Well, let's not search anymore. I'll have Mrs. Wiggins take care of it in the morning. She understands things like this. Whatever you say, I'll carry on if you like. Oh, no, you go ahead. Finish eating. I've had plenty. Let's get out of here. Oh, all right. I'm a stranger. 
stranger here. You go first. Oh, yes, of course. Pardon me. a red letter night for my memory book. I've got his interest, but definitely. And if that rambling burglar will just realize that he's been given the brush and go burglar someplace else, I'll get results. Sister, I'm coming in on the wing of the prayer. You know, Lou, you don't seem to realize what a serious situation you're in. Oh, yes, I do, but I feel so safe in leaving it all to you and so happy. It's just as if a heavy burden had been lifted from my shoulders. It was, and dumped right on my shoulders. Why did you have to pick out my house? It might have been faith. Faith, nothing. It was just plain bad luck for me. Has there been an accident? No. They just tried to climb this tree and got discouraged, that's all. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Yes, yes, I'm very funny. You should have my job. <laughs> Can't help but feel I may be doing the wrong thing. Turning you over to the police might be just what you need. Dump some sense in it anyway. I hope. Pretty light sleeper, aren't you? Well, doesn't seem to be out here. Yes, I guess that's right. Maybe it was in the kitchen. I, I just had a wonderful idea. About what? About you and me and everything. You seem to be in such a dither, trying to make up your mind as to what you should do about me. Yeah, that's putting it rather mildly. If you're really interested in saving me from a criminal career, why don't you put me on probation? I could report you two or three times a week, and it would be such a help and inspiration if I could bring my problems to you. Heaven forbid. I have no desire to compete with Mr. Anthony. feel like I've been going around beating babies or something. But I'm so unhappy. It's so depressing to realize I'm a total loss, not worth bothering about. Well, you're nothing of the kind. I'm sure you have many wonderful qualities. You're only saying that to try and make me feel better. No, I really mean it. You have a world of personality. I noticed that the first time I saw you. You've helped me so much. No one ever expressed faith in me before. They always expected the worst to happen. Well, I'm very happy if I've been any help in setting you right. <laughs> about in this house. Mrs. Wiggins, will you please go to bed and stay there? That's nothing but your imagination. I'm an upright woman, and my imagination never gets the best of me. I heard a bump in the linen closet where the door opens out in the hall. It ain't shut tight, and somebody said something that no lady would imagine. Are screeching going to keep up all night? I suppose you'd rather be murdered in bed. Well, if I'm not murdered, I'd like to get some sleep. Oh, I'm afraid you've aroused the whole neighborhood. I... Oh. Well, 
Well, good evening, gentlemen. What do you want? We lost the burglar. Well, that's too bad, but I'm quite sure you didn't lose him here. We saw the officer chasing a burglar and his female accomplice, and they, uh, they well, he lost them. We saw him running around in circles, and we decided to help him. Help him run around in circles? No, help him catch the burglar and his female accomplice. We heard someone he yelled for help. Yes, that was my housekeeper, a very nervous old lady with a lively imagination. Oh, well, I'd like to talk to your housekeeper. Where is she? Officer, I strongly suggest that you let well enough alone. Don't interfere with the officer in his performance of duty. Very well, follow me. Isn't that a rather speedy crowd for you to be playing around with? Joan Hollingsworth, what's the meaning of this? It's a long and complicated story, Tommy. Not something I can dash off in a minute and at the same time worry about that flock of burglar hounds. Let it lay until tomorrow. No matter what other people might say, Joan, no matter how black things appear to be, I believe in you. That's frightfully noble of you, Tommy. Counting myself, that's too believing in me. Quite a crowd. As you were. If there are any funny cracks to be made, I'll make them. You of all people ought to treat this matter seriously. Don't you realize how people might interpret your conduct? Alone in this house with a man at 3 o'clock in the morning. 2.30, and besides, we haven't been alone. There's been a disgusting amount of traffic through here all evening. Mrs. Wiggins, the housekeeper, and Martha, the maid, have been playing tag with the burglar ever since I arrived. Is there really a burglar? Sure there's a burglar. He brought me here and insisted upon hanging around. Who brought you here? The burglar brought me here, and he jarred Mrs. Wiggins right out of her cubicle, but definitely. Don't hand me a flock of Alice in Wonderland alibis. Imagine asking anyone to believe that a burglar brought you to this house and then start playing tag with a housekeeper. You demanded this explanation, Tommy. I didn't try to force it upon you. And if it causes you so much mental anguish, you have no one to blame but yourself. That's just like a woman. You quibble, squirm, and evade. You haven't the courage to meet an issue fair and square, face to face. Oh. I thought I was walking into a room up there. I, I guess I must have been mistaken. I... Oh, hello there. Uh, could this be Jimmy, the lucky lad? No, this is Tommy. Oh, Tommy, uh, you certainly get around, don't you? Do you know him? Just a passing acquaintance. Michael stopped by while chasing a burglar. Michael, huh? Seems to me he works faster when he stops than when he's chasing burglars. I must have made a, a four ball. Uh, well, I guess I'll be going back upstairs. And who is Jimmy? Is he the burglar? No, I don't know his name. Jimmy isn't anyone. I just had to pull a name out of the air to ease myself out of an embarrassing predicament. I never knew you were capable of feeling embarrassed. I'll ignore that crack. Oh, come on, I'll take you home. Thanks awfully, Tommy. You run along. I'm not ready to leave yet. Joan Hollingsworth, you're coming home with me this minute, or I'll telephone your mother to come and get you. You can be so repulsive. Me. Not important what you want. I'm going to make certain you go home. Oh, I wish I could borrow Joe Lewis's left for a minute. <laughs> I've got some talking to do to you, and I better like the answers. Come <laughs> here. Well, I hope you're satisfied your mislaid burglar isn't here. <laughs> Shut up, or I'll flatten you. You're not dead. He's not dead. He's unconscious. What happened? That burglar hit him with something. And if he'd been killed, it would have been my fault. I never dreamed you packed such a wallop. Oh, Tommy, I'm so terribly sorry. That's all right. I guess I was obnoxious, but I was only trying to help. Ooh, what a head. I haven't been entirely honest with you this evening. Is that right? 
Uh huh. I'm not a fallen little derelict on the verge of a criminal career who deserves a lot of help and sympathy. No. No, and I'm not a housemaid either. Oh, well, now you amaze me. No, I'm not a housemaid. I'm really Joan Hollingsworth, and I expect I'm quite a problem to my mother. I started something this evening that kept piling up like a snowball. I didn't know how to stop it. I see. Just a childish prank, huh? Well, it sort of started out that way. Well, I'm delighted to have been able to add to your amusement. Must have been a lot of fun making a fool out of me tonight. Ought to be quite a story to tell your friends. Oh, no, I swear. Do you think I'd believe anything you say? Even under oath? Oh, now, don't start that act again. That's a little overworked, you know. What you need more than anything else in the world is a good sound spanking. Suppose you tell me what this is all about. I've known Joan for a long time, and I'm not going to stand by and see her get into a mess. Please, Tommy, don't ask any questions. Don't say anything. Just take me home. I think that's an excellent suggestion. Please believe me. I'm so sorry to have caused you so much trouble. That's a fine hobby. Do you think you'd have enough gumption to ask her some questions? Imagine your sleep will be undisturbed the rest of the evening, Mrs. Wiggins. Disgracing the family by impersonating the maid was a tough hurdle for Mother, but she clung to the system and we weathered the storm. Not that it matters to me now. I've got myself a heartache that lacks out everything else. What's the matter with you, Joni? You're not yourself at all anymore. What makes you think there's anything the matter with me? Well, that's perfectly obvious. It's not like you to go dragging yourself around the house like a dying cop. Are you in love? With whom might I ask would I be in love? Heaven only knows. Almost anyone. I've seen you travel the limit of possibilities. From the butcher boy to the good-looking young doctor when you had the measles. Remember? Schoolgirl infatuations. I've outgrown that sort of thing. You're not ill, are you, Joan? No, I'm not ill. But I wish you'd go fly a kite and leave me alone. Well, I guess there's nothing seriously wrong with you. Organically, anyway. Ethel, Ethel, that mysterious burglar is still wandering around Westport. I just heard that he broke into the Salisbury house last night. Good heavens, that's right in our neighborhood. It's getting to be a very serious matter. A private night watchman attempted to capture the burglar and was injured. Mother, why don't you put your pearls in the safety deposit box until they catch this burglar? Perhaps I should. But, Mother, you promised me that I could wear them this evening. It's foolish to take a chance. And you couldn't get the first base of Jay Waldo if you were smothered in pearls. Why, you impudent little brat. Now, girls, please, let's don't lose our tempers. Oh, dear, it's so annoying to have anyone like that burglar wandering around. Westport has always been so delightfully exclusive.
the matter? Didn't they invite Cinder Love over to their party? You know, I was disappointed. I only came here because I wanted to see you. I want to apologize for the way I talked to you the other night. You mean you really forgive me? <laughs> you don't seem to understand. I'm asking you to forgive me. I have nothing to forgive. I don't blame you for getting mad. I do. Fellow doesn't have any right to lose his sense of humor just because the joke's on him. Say, incidentally, you were very clever the way you put it over on me. I can't help being afraid that this is all a dream. Are you absolutely certain you're here talking to me? Absolutely certain. Say, look here, as long as they won't invite Cinderella to their party, what do you say we promote one of our own? Fine, what do we do? Mm, anything you say. But nothing particular in mind. We could start out and cut a few capers. Well, I'm not familiar with the technique of caper cutting, but I'm willing to learn. We could go to the grove where they have boats on the lake and funny and thrilling things to ride. It's not very dignified, but it's lots of fun. There's a dance hall, and Cinderella, if you recall the story, was entitled to one dance. And I also recall that she was well worth dancing with. Okay, I'm so let's go. Uh, no more burgling. No more burgling. Mother, Joan's not in her room, and I know she's responsible for the disappearance of Mr. Barnes. I shall give her a good scolding. Scolding? I'll tear her hair out. Oh, oh no, 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 my dear, now. We mustn't lose our tempers. Now, now please. Now. You'll have to get another shoulder. I have to take this one home. Oh, Wally, you shouldn't have allowed him to flop all over you like this. How could you drive? Well, it was difficult, but I managed. So this is why I got the brush off. I saw you sneak off with this fellow, and I stayed around till you came back. Oh, it's awfully nice of you, Tommy, but not necessary. I can get in all right. Don't hand me that girlish patter. I'm not going to stay around and see you go off the deep end. Well, I'll take it easy, Tommy. Let's not disturb the whole neighborhood. You pipe down. I'll get around to you later. You better go inside. Yes, Wally. Hey, come back here. Oh, wait a minute, Tommy. Let's listen, make... Listen, I've heard enough. Oh, oh, you... Now, Tommy, take it easy. What do you want to do? Don't be a fool, Tommy. Listen here. Listen here. Wait a minute. Take it easy, will you, Tommy? Listen, I've heard enough. Oh, you now, take it easy. Quiet. One score cut of you, and I'll give you a bit good. Pull a double cross on me, yeah? <laughs> Brown, wiggle out of this. Now, get me in this joint and leave me that safe and do it right now. Do you get it? And you'll keep your trap shut. I have to climb the tree. Come on, get going. Don't stand there arguing about it. And if you make one sound, accidental or otherwise, I'll slam you so hard you'll be lopsided the rest of your life. Come on, get. Now, look here. Tommy, I'm getting tired of this. Yeah, I'm gonna lose my patience with you in a minute. I'd leave in a hurry. Now lead me to that safe.
Don't make a nuisance of yourself. Can't you sit quiet for five minutes? I thought you knew all about this sort of thing. Can't you even open a safe without scratching off all the paint? Wreck me. Why all the fuss over a bottle of hand lotion? Hand lotion. Can anybody be that dumb? Look, for your information, this bottle is filled with soup. Nitroglycerin to you, you drop it. We're spread all over the center of town. Hey, cut it out, will you? Come on, hey boys, break it up. This is no way to be spending an evening. Well, I'm just trying to explain something to this young idiot. Well, you've got a funny way of explaining. Now listen. I've got all the listening so far. It's your turn now. Don't be a fool. Put that bottle down. You make one pass at me and I'll put it down. I'll put it down so hard it will explode with a loud noise and scatter us all over this end of town. Oh, oh Baloney. You don't dare drop it. No? If you're so sure about that, why don't you come over and take it? Oh, well, come on, baby. I mean, don't, don't fool with that stuff. It's dangerous. Of course it is. If it weren't, you'd come over here and knock me lopsided. Oh, I, I didn't mean that to... I wouldn't be rough with you. Baloney, as you remarked a moment ago. Oh, come on, on the level, honey. Put that suit down before you stub your toe. Don't argue. Be careful. You don't know how touchy that stuff is. It might explode if you give it a nasty look. I don't care. You're tough on a big shot when you can talk about knocking women lopsided. But you're not so tough when you're up against something with a wallop. Get in that hall. Who can figure a thing? Especially one that's gone nuts. Take it easy. You wouldn't do that to a pal. Keep moving. Get over by that closet door. Look, I'm going to get even for this. I want to make you so sorry. I wish they drowned you in a bubble bath. Now's your chance. Make me sorry or shut up. Don't be a fool. You might drop that stuff. You're going through that door. Make up your mind whether you want to open it first or not. You again. You sure get around, don't you? I reached the end of the line. Oh, oh, it might explode. It might explode. This, I have it on good authority. If you give it a nasty look, it'll explode. Well, what is it? Soup, I, I mean nitroglycerin. Well, you shouldn't play around with a thing like that. I won't ever again. What is the meaning of this commotion? Mother, I've captured the burglar. The burglar? But the, that isn't the burglar. That, that's Mr. Barnes. I know that. The burglar's in the closet. Joan, don't you know better than to bring burglars into the house and put them in the closet? Oh, dear. What will that child do next? What did you say about a burglar? I've locked the Westport burglar in the closet. You can have him. I don't want him anymore. Do I want him? Well, I certainly do. Come out with your hands up before I start blasting. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You sure get around, don't you? Come on, get going. Come on. Oh, uh, by the way, Mrs. Hollingsworth, Joan made two captures tonight. I'm the other one. Oh, dear. Pardon me, pardon me. Oh, oh, I think I'm going to faint. So am I, but I'll do mine in private. Oh. 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 That little book helped me get away with murder, but I don't play that system from this side of the line. No little savage is going to make a fool out of me.